we imparted our own souls because you're dear unto us. Beloved, this, this, this is Christianity here. I know it ought to convict you as it does me. We fall so far short of this. We want to make it as easy as possible. We want to just receive the knowledge that our sins are forgiven and rest there. And we should rest there. We should rest there. We should, we should, we should allow the matter concerning whether or not we're right before God to be laid to rest because Christ has done the work. But the question then comes back, well, what, so what then? What's for the rest of my life? Why not just cause me to go up into glory right now? Why am I here, Lord? And Paul presents it here in very vivid language. Why we're here, the imparting of our souls, the giving away of our lives for the needs of other believers, especially new converts. Are you convicted? I am. I wonder if even the morning and evening sacrifice is somewhat in his mind when he spoke to the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20 and verse 31 and he said, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. Constantly the continual offering Night and day, morning and evening was showing that need for the continual offering until Christ would come and do that full and finished work. But he says, uh, he, he gives us uh, the sense of himself being given every day, night and day with tears. I'm just, I'm imparting in my life. I cease not to warn everyone night and day, imparting my life. We can use the language of chapter 2 as he writes to the Thessalonians. I'm imparting myself night and day. Because you were dear unto us. When he wrote to those in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 15, he puts it this way, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. <sighs> Serving the church. Serving the church. We are not islands unto ourselves, beloved. And there's not one of us that can replicate the work of the Apostle Paul in the fullness of it. But we take our cue from him and we ask ourselves the question, in what way am I serving the body? and I'm parting and giving a piece of myself away. You have your little weeks all planned out. Every evening you have it all nicely planned. Every evening. This is what you do on a Monday evening and on a Tuesday evening. And just taking even one of those evenings, even once a month, and saying, let's have whoever it might be, over for dinner. That's imparting a little bit of yourself. I mean, it's not to the degree that we see here, but it's in the same vein. It's, the, it's putting yourself out a little. It's thinking ahead, it's, it's preparing the meal, it's everything that's involved, and, and, and just cut. it's just the tiny little step of serving the body. Maybe you know someone's going through a particular hardship, a difficulty. You've caught wind that they're facing difficult times. Maybe they particularly are on your heart. This is a way you can show real, you don't even have to talk about the matter. You don't even have to bring it up. You just show that they're being cared for, that someone's thinking about them at a time when they're struggling. Imparting our own souls because you were dear unto us. Beloved, does the church matter to you? Does it? Does the bride for whom Christ offered himself matter to you? 
It must. Some people, of course, will be more prone to isolate themselves and they need even more work. Oh, that the church would reflect such love. Oh, that pastors would be consistent in this. Being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. You matter. One Christian saying to the other Christian, you matter. Have we the love of Christ? 